So yeah. these, these two books are totally different, yet to me, they had like similarities. So, you know, there are powerful girls in this. So can you guys kind of each give an overview of really, you know, how would you pitch your books? So Julie, we can start with you. And it sure. Um, so my book is about Chloe Winberger, who seems to have her life in order. Things are going well. Um, her B-list mom is on the way to the B-plus list. She just got into the college of her dreams. The boy she's had a crush on since middle school just asked her to prom. Like things are going well in her world um, until one morning her doorbell rings and the FBI is there to arrest her mother in a nationwide college admission scandal. Um, the book is 100% inspired by the actual real college admissions scandal, but is, is a complete fictionalized take. None of these characters are veiled versions of anybody else. Um, it's totally fiction. But it was really, really fun for me to sort of delve into questions of um, privilege and complicity um, and sort of our current broken system. Alexandra, what about Black Canary? So Black Canary, it's actually, it's a standalone book, but it's the fifth book in the DC Icon series, which each book in the series takes a different established legacy DC superhero and a different author tackles their YA origin story. So it's been the pinch me moment of my life to get to do this because I got to follow Leah Bardugo, Marie Lu, Sarah J. Moff, and Matt Della Pena, and then somehow it's me um, following. And um, my uh, character that I'm writing about is Dinah Lance, Black Canary. And I've set her story in, I created this near future dystopian Gotham City to tell her story in. And it's a world where women have been denied most of their rights and privileges, including the ability to sing, to use their voices. And Gotham City in this in this near future world is run by a very tyrannical patriarchal organization known as the Court of Owls. So the book really combines superhero action adventure thrills with um, some of the deeper themes that I wanted to explore. And um, there's also a romance as well between two really epic DC characters, Dinah um, and Oliver Queen, Arrow. And yeah, I'm really excited about it. So now how did both of your backgrounds play into the characters and in, in, in the book? Want to take it first? You go first. Oh yeah, sure. I'll start. So um, I feel like my background was honestly everything when it comes to this book. I think it was a huge reason why I, well, it, it was the reason why I was thought of for this character because my former life, uh, in my former life, I was a teen pop singer. So Black Canary's uh, superpower comes from her voice. She has something called a canary cry, which is so cool. It's, it's that basically she can let out this, this yell with her voice, this sound that's enough to shred metal, to take down her enemies, to do all, wreak all sorts of havoc against bad guys. But a lot of um, comic book artists have kind of played with that to make her a singer or part of a rock band or things like that. So that's how I initially came to DC's attention as a possibility for this character. But what really struck me about, about Dinah, which also came from my background, was the idea that a superpower, a female superpowers could be, a female superhero's power could come from her voice. To me, that was so striking because my family, um, we come from Iran and in the pre-revolution era, um, my family and the women in my family enjoyed so much power themselves. My, but you know, the good kind of power, of course. Um, my grandmother was Monir Vakili. She was Iran's foremost opera singer. And she was also this incredible advocate for other women in the arts. She opened the first co-ed boarding school for girls as well as boys to learn, you know, the art of classical singing. She just created a lot of opportunities for other women. And so all of a sudden, when the revolution of 1979 happened, just overnight, women's rights were stripped. My grandmother's opera company that she co-founded was shuttered. The school was closed. She, she wasn't allowed and no women were allowed to sing publicly. And it's still, it's so crazy to say this, but it's still like that to this day in Iran. You can still get severely punished if you're a woman and you sing publicly. So it was 100% my background that made me wanna tell this story 
especially because I never got to meet my grandmother. I was born years after the revolution here in the States and she had already tragically died in a car accident by then. And so this was kind of like my way of being able to sort of, you know, just go back into my family's past, but sort of bring it into the future, into this dystopian world and kind of play out those themes and try to, you know, grapple with what the women in my family went through, what the women in Iran are still going through, and what is kind of often a threat to women even here in the United States. I mean, if it could happen there, it could happen here too. You know, hopefully not. And I feel like I was able to write a victory for her on the page that, you know, I wish she would have gotten to see in real life. So that's my long explanation of how my- I love it. It was fabulous. (laughs) That was fascinating. I actually now want you to write the story of your grandmother for real. Like oh. I would read that historical novel. I think that would be so interesting. Um, for for admission, um, I think some of my background played into the writing of it, um, and some of my life played into the interest in it. So um, I went to some fancy schools. I went to um, University of Pennsylvania and then Harvard Law School, um, and I was a lawyer. And so I think my legal background really helped in terms of digging into the material and sort of understanding the legal ramifications around the college admission scandal. Um, When it first broke, I sat down and read the 300 page complaint um, purely because I was fascinated. This was before I knew I wanted to write a book about it. Um, And I think sort of in recent years, I've been um, tangling a little bit or metabolizing um, or understanding sort of um, how my own privilege has played into my educational background. I mean, I'm really proud to have gone to those schools, um, but I, I'm putting the accomplishment in, in a greater context um, in a way I never did before. Um, but more importantly, I'm a parent and I have uh, two kids. I have an eight-year-old and an 11-year-old and I'm raising them in Los Angeles. Um, and I spend a lot of time thinking about how to be an ethical parent. Um, I feel like we live in a world in which it's set up not to be ethical as a parent. Um, and how tricky it is um, to raise to raise children where we're supposed to, you know, be a village, but we're pitting each kid against each other in the village. Um, and then, at what stage am I complicit in this larger system? You know, when my kids are older and my daughter is writing her college admissions essay, will I help her and correct the first sentence to that kick-ass first sentence that I came up with because I'm a professional writer, or will I be able to hold myself black, back and let her write that first sentence? What's the right thing to do there? 